Factor out the greatest common factor solution. So let's try to see what the greatest common factor is. The greatest common factor is just the greatest factor that they all have in common. Let's start with the last piece because it looks pretty simple. So we have 9xy here at the end. So what does 9xy have in common with negative 15x squared y squared? Well, it looks like 3 goes into both of these, so that's a possibility. And also, 3 goes into the first one. So 3 is part of our greatest common factor, because they all have a factor of 3. What else? Well, it looks like um, x is a factor of the last one. It's also a factor of this piece here, 15x squared y squared. And it's also a factor of the first one. So x is another good candidate. The last term also has a y, and the other ones also have y's. So it looks like 3xy. So that's going to be our greatest common factor. I should emphasize that when I started the thought process, I picked the simplest looking one. That's usually a good idea. Like if you start with this one, I mean, that's okay, but you have the x cubed, so you have to be careful. You kind of have to look at all of it together, but you have to look somewhere first. So my eyes always go to the simplest looking piece. So that's our greatest common factor. So now we have to factor it out. So we'll just write it down, 3xy. And then you put a parentheses. And then you just have to fill in what's missing. You ask yourself, what do you multiply by 3xy in order to get 3x cubed y? So you're missing, looks like an x squared. Because when you multiply 3xy by x squared, you're going to add the exponents. You'll add the 1 and the 2, and that'll give you the 3. Okay, So that's why, that's why that's missing. Because right, when you multiply, you do this. right? There's really a 1 here, and you do 1 plus 2, and that gives you 3. So that's how you get that 3. It's a little bit harder here. Um, what's missing to get this piece? So we have a 3xy, so we're going to need a minus sign. So let's deal with the 15 first. How do you get a 15 when you have a 3? Well, you need a 5, so 5. And then how do you get an x squared when you have an x? Well, you need an x, right? because x times x is x squared. And how do you get a y squared when you have a y? Well, you need a y, right? Because y times y is y squared. Fun times. That was a little bit harder. The last one's really simple. We already have 3xy. There's a 9xy here. We just need a positive 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, and we'll have our xy. And that, my friends, would be the final answer to this problem. I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there in the world. Good luck.